does friction exist only between solid parts? Not necessarily. Friction is offered by fluids like air and water as well. And this force of friction due to fluids is referred to as a fluid friction. The friction we have seen between solid parts is referred to as dry friction. The major states of matter are solid, liquid and gas. And liquids and gases are generally referred to as fluids. Why are liquids and gases considered to be fluids? One common characteristic of fluids is that they have no fixed shape and can be easily deformed. Let's discuss a bit more about fluid friction in this lesson. Just like solids, fluids too exert a force of friction when objects move through them. Do you think air offers resistance? Doesn't seem intuitive, right? When I drop a stone from a particular height, it falls to the ground. Does air offer resistance here? Of course it does. What about water? Does it offer resistance? Yes, when the fish swim, they encounter fluid resistance from the water. The frictional force exerted by fluids is also referred to as drag. What does fluid friction depend on? Let's talk about the first obvious factor. It's the nature of the fluid. To understand this point, you just need to answer a simple question. An object moves from point A to B through air and in the second case, a similar object travels from A to B through water. Which object do you think encounters more resistance? Clearly, it will be the water, right? Yes, more the thickness of the fluid, greater will be the frictional force acting on an object which moves through it. There is a term which describes a fluid's resistance to flow. It's called viscosity. So here we can say that the water is more viscous than air. Higher the viscosity, more will be the resistance offered by that fluid. Honey is more viscous than water, which is why it offers more friction than water. That was the first factor affecting fluid friction, the nature of the fluid. Can you think of any other factor? Another factor is the speed with which the object is travelling. Higher the speed of the object moving through a fluid, greater will be the frictional force acting on it. A vehicle travelling at 100 miles per hour will face more drag of air as compared to a similar vehicle travelling at 50 miles per hour. Apart from the nature of the fluid and the speed with which the object is travelling, is there any other factor on which fluid friction depends on? Yes, it also depends on the shape of the object. And it's really important that we understand this factor well. Have you ever thought about why aeroplanes are shaped like this? It could just have been a rectangular box flying in the air. How have the fish evolved to be shaped like this? Why are the ships designed to be given this shape? There's a reason for all this. They're given a streamlined shape to minimize the fluid friction. The shape of the aeroplane, if you notice, is like that of a bird. This process of giving an object a particular shape to decrease the fluid friction is known as streamlining. Streamlining the object can greatly reduce the resistance offered by the fluid. A car faces less of friction from air as it has a streamlined shape. A bus on the other hand will face more air friction as it doesn't have a streamlined shape. So these were the different factors on which fluid friction depends. Nature of the fluid, the speed of the object flowing through the fluid and the shape of the object.